Well, welcome back to What's It Worth, part two. Um, I My name is Sage, and with me is Jason, and we are looking at Silver Sides buses uh, that have recently been up for sale uh, in and around the United States. And uh, um, so Jason and I, if you've not seen part one, go back, because we do talk a little bit about, uh, you know, kind of what was stock on these original buses when they were made. Um, so it's worthy to go back and, and find that video and, and look for that. And uh, and then we can uh, we can kind of discuss with you some more about uh, you know about that. But so today we're going to kind of continue where we left off the last time. Um, we're going to start with uh, a, a shining example of restoration, amazing restoration. Um, and so this bus that you see on our pictures right now, um, well, Jason, you probably know more about it than I do, other than when he found it. Um, it was a disaster. It looked a lot like some of the buses we've been seeing so far. Yeah. So this was the what's known as the Renner bus. Mark Renner restored this bus. Uh, he bought several buses for parts to get all the pieces required. Um, he's the original one that came up with all the molds to get the lights and the windows rubbers replaced. Um, painstakingly detailed oriented gentleman uh, put a lot of effort into restoring this one. I can't remember how many years. It's probably like a three to five year restoration but every single piece of this bus has been restored to bring it back to looking like an original Greyhound. And it, it just, pictures don't do it justice. You got to see it in person if you ever get the opportunity to. It's just an absolutely amazing bus. So this one, uh, we had a chance to see um, when we were at a Greyhound bus reunion down in Arkansas uh, this last summer. Um, and that's when I actually met you. Um, and we showed up in Volkswagens and everybody else is driving regular buses and it's like, okay, well, you can't be that bad. He's driving a Volkswagen. So, um, but we had a chance to go inside. This thing is amazing. If you go out on uh, YouTube and, and type in Silver Sides Restoration, you'll find a series of videos um, about the painstaking efforts of, of doing the restoration. Um, the, the, the engine he put into this is amazing. Everything about this thing was taken apart and cleaned and put back together, which is crazy. Uh, not so much that it's very complicated. I mean, there's not a lot to these buses. They're very simple, but everything weighs thousands of pounds. I mean, it's, it's not, you know, like a, a Volkswagen bus restoration where you can, you know, put it on a metal frame and roll it around and, you know, you can take anything off and pretty much carry it with your own two hands. I mean, everything, the wheels, you can't even pick up the wheels with tires on them. These things are just big and bulky and heavy. So to see the work that they've done is amazing. I mean, everything about this bus is perfect. Yeah, so, I think if you search for Paradise Coach, you'll find it because they're the ones that did the interior and a lot of the the videos of of the interior being done inside of it. So uh, I think you'll find it under that. So this one's a cool bus, and uh, you know, I, I guess if I really wanted to bring a bus back, if I I've been talking about my pre war bus, I'm going to just kind of make it look sort of like a sleeper, you know, where it looks like it's all beat up, but it's actually mechanically really sound. Um, you know, if you're not going that route, this would be the way I'd go. I'd paint it this way. I'd, I'd get a dog. I'd get the lettering. Um, you know, he, he the details are phenomenal. He's even got the the lettering down here. Um, so he's done a really nice job of uh, um, of of restoring this bus. And so we wanted to show you kind of what perfect looks like. And this is it. <laughs> I think he'd be hard pressed to top that bus. That's the cherry on top of the cherry. I I totally agree. All right, so let's get back into it. <laughs> in contrast, uh, this is a bus that's out in California. Now, you know a little bit about this one. Uh, 776. I, I just saw the ad on Facebook for it, I think. Um, I can't remember all the details. I don't think this one's actually in my notebook because it wasn't one I considered as a potential bus for me because it needed too much and was too far away. So let's take a look at, at kind of what we can tell from looking at it. One is a um, couple of original parts are missing which are happen a lot. The, of course, the what's called the dog dish, which sits right here is gone. Um, the original taillights were replaced at some point. Um, somebody's added this really goofy iron bumper. That's um, just scary. If you look at how those bumpers are put together. To tow. Yeah. yeah. They, you, I wouldn't be towing a vehicle behind just by mounting it to this bumper bracket. Um, you, you know, to put a, put a bumper bracket on a bus, you, you got to really find, get clever with how you're going to connect it somewhere. Cause it's a unibody design. It's not really set up to handle a lot of that. Yeah. And you're it, tying into the engine cradle and frame as that supports the whole engine transmission basically. And that's what you're pulling on. That whole back of the bus is just um, hanging off a few mounts. 
So when we take a look at it, uh, the it, it has split rims, which tells me 20 inch tires, which tells me the tires and rims will need to be replaced. Um, there's some goofy stuff like this thing. I don't know what's going on here, um, but uh, that's usually, uh, well, the battery trays on the other side. Batteries kind of move around. That's the other thing is that they seem to, things seem to progress with these. So this is a, uh, this is a 47 based on the, the model or the, the production number of it. Um, it looks front, like it's still got the step because you can see the step partially coming down there with the door opening. Yep. So that's the step there. Neat. Almost all of them have the step. Some of them are rusty. Like my Texas bus, I have to get under there and just get it loosened up. And the, the rod that pushes it out um, has been disconnected. It wasn't bent. It just was disconnected. So I've seen probably a third of the buses I've considered buying are missing that step. They actually pull it right out. Oh, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's pro people have problems with the tracks and they don't understand how to fix it, so they yeah. just remove it rather than disconnecting it. Yeah, yeah. Or they take it out to repair it and lost it, never bothered putting it back together. So a lot of the windows are hazy. So these are double pane windows, and it looks like some of them will need to be redone. These these run actually not too bad. I got a quote for sixty five bucks to get uh, to get these glass done. Yeah, so. you're going to be five times that in gaskets to fix each one though. It's a yeah. There's a lot of gaskets, actually, all the different individual parts. Uh, Mark Mark Renner explained it to me because we, we we're going to be doing all the gaskets and all, all the different profiles and where they fit. And it's amazing how much actually in, goes into each one of those windows, especially the sliders. Right. Someone's moved the sliders around, too, if you look on that yeah. one. Yeah. I've seen a lot of buses where people take sliders off the opposite side and move them because they've either got a kitchen or something where they don't need a slider. But... If you look at those sliders, they slide in one direction and the opposite slide side slides in the opposite direction. And that's so when you're driving down the highway and it's raining, you're not forcing water into the interior of the bus. So if you put the wrong slider in, you're going to get moisture in the bus when it rains and you drive. Yeah. So where'd you put a price on this one? The, the body seems like it's an okay shape. No idea about <clears throat> the engine. I would say this is a $2,500 or less bus. Yeah, without anything knowing about the mechanicals, just assuming by where it's sitting and look looking at how far the tires are sunk into the ground, it's probably twenty five hundred dollar bus. There, there is one other redeeming thing, and that's the cargo latches are intact. And uh, we, I've seen some shining examples of people just not getting out PV blaster and getting these things loosened up, and just destroying these things and re replacing them. We'll we'll be seeing some of that here in a little bit anyway. All right. So let's see what our next one is. Ooh. So this one, um, let's see. Well, let, let's kind of take take this one apart. First off, these are the original dash switches. Um, so the dash is original, but man, there's, there's hours into restoring one of these. Um, the engine, uh, by looking at this engine, I'll wait till that, that black thing goes away. I don't know how to make that disappear, but the engine looks uh, like it's it's complete, but it's ugly. Um, so to replace all the hoses, and I can tell you this, um, depending on what quality, if you go to like Napa and just get Napa to replace all the hose lines for the cooling system and for the fuel system and for the air system, uh, in the back of the engine, you're looking at about $800. That's not um, too bad. It's that much in labor again, though, to do it. Yeah. Cause then you got to get fittings and. The hose itself is okay, but then you get fittings. I guess if you got online, if you really measured everything and ordered online, you could probably drop it down to 500 and just if you're cutting your own hoses, <laughs> which I guess if I were really getting into restoration, I'd probably do it that way. Most of the cases, I'm just out in the middle of, you know, some guy's backyard. And so I'm not, you know, it's not at my shop. And so I'm just going Yeah, to you're better off store. to take them into a hydraulic hose shop and have them yeah. swage, swage properly for the ends and rather than trying to build your own from kits. This one's this one's looking very original in the back. It's got the original filter setup. It's got the original direct drive generator. So do we do we know which one this is? This is seven seventy. Oh, this is that one from a guy named Shane. I think this is in Wisconsin. And I talked to him. I looked at the pictures on this bus. He wanted he well he wouldn't even give me a price. He said give me an offer, but I knew he was gearing towards about twenty five hundred bucks. And I just said, look, this is a bigger project than I would want to take on. Which is surprising given what I've taken on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this this is probably about the same as your your pre war. Uh, I think it's a little rougher than pre war. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, let's go to the next one. So this one is in Chico, California. This is is this uh, 
this is that the same guy who owns Bus yeah, 003? Yeah, 003. That's right. Yeah. Okay. He's got the pair of them. And he actually has the pair of them for sale. Um, they're sitting at a storage lot, I believe. Well, you can see in that upper right corner picture that that's their, their, there they are next to each other. Oops. There they are side by side. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's right. So, again, no taillights at all. I mean, this thing's been stripped out. I the, think he has a lot of the parts that were taken off because no, he was getting, so he's, he was getting, he's just taking pictures. So sometimes that's worse <laughs> is the guy who's pulled it all apart and stuck it inside the bus as opposed to just leaving it alone. Um, I'd rather take it apart, clean it, put it, put it back together. You know, all these lights, like on my, my pre-war bus, I'm going to do all in, as I rewire it, I'm going to do it in LED. Um, but I'd rather have, see how it comes apart and not have to try to figure out how did this guy do this? Right. Um, this one needs complete wiring to front to back, just like they all do. This one, I believe the story is that the main harness, the main power wire up to the dash actually caught fire. Yeah. So it's been, the whole dash harness has been cut out of it and removed. So there, as you can see, the panel's missing in that picture. So you've got a few days worth of wiring just to get this thing rolling again. I don't know if he's got the dash panels. He probably does. Um, looks like it's got partial heater ducts halfway up. All right. So where would you put a price on this one? Well, I'm kind of tainted because I know what he's asking for the pair. So what he's asking for the pair is is probably close to fair. Um, I think he's down to $7,000 asking price for the pair. And as far as I know, they're still available. Nobody's bought them. I had actually seriously considered this one because... He, he made me an offer where I could fly in, spend a week getting it running, driving. Apparently, it runs and drives. He took parts, uh, the radiator from the other one. Um, it just needs the lights put back on, and it needs to be wired. Uh, he made me an offer that, obviously, I'm so far away, I wouldn't be able to take the parts bus to strip whatever I wanted off 003 and pack it inside this bus and take it with me. And, man, I could probably spend two weeks taking parts off that other bus. And that, that was kind of a deterrent because I know I'd want to save it all. So, I, I don't know. It, it, it'd be a job. You need a, a month's worth of vacation to go do that. Two for seven grand. I, I would pass on this, you know, yeah. myself. But uh, but again, if you're in California, Northern California, and looking for, you know, a basically well, a full-time look, job at the for a year. Siding on this, it actually looks fairly straight. And you can still see the witness mark of the dog, I believe. Yeah. So it it might be worth it if, if you're close by and you can haul it home and tinker with it on your own time. But if you've got to haul it any distance or fly in and try and drive it home, it's yeah, it's probably not worth it. All right. This one is actually pretty sharp. These aren't current pictures, by the way. These are oh. what it looked like when uh, Mark actually owned this bus. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, so this one's been stripped down since then. I believe the paint's been stripped off it. All the lights have been taken off it. I couldn't find current pictures of it. It, it was up on Craigslist recently as, uh, as a pair. The guy was trying to sell a pair of them. Um, yeah, so it, it's it got some holes in it, uh, as you can see on the one side. Um, apparently, it runs and drives. Um, the dash panel is missing now. The dash panel has been removed, as well as a lot of the lights. Uh, I, oh, a lot of the lights are actually missing from this bus because they were used as part of the Renner restoration. Uh -huh. um, so this was Mark Renner's parts bus, basically. Yeah, yeah. I think these pictures actually came from Mark. Um, okay. So, but I mean, pretty straight bus, pretty nice bus, um, 998. So it's after the first 500, which we'll talk about that. Um, so the buses that were made pre-war have a, a different differential and a couple of other different things. And all the buses made 1947 with a serial number pre-536 are very similar to the pre-war buses. And they have some unusual and hard to find parts. Um, this one is built after. So Mark's, Mark Renner's uh, complete, you know, bus we saw at the beginning of this video, um, he actually swapped, I think he swapped the differential from the the quote unquote Renner bus to this one um, in the back because uh, the other one was a, a pre-536 and this one is the more common differential that you can get parts for. I didn't know that. Um, I actually tried to see this bus when I was out in Oregon, but I, I wasn't there long enough to connect with the gentleman that owns them to go to go look at the pair of them because I, I'd considered if he he listed them as a pair, but I was going to try and negotiate to buy just one bus and take 
all of the parts to make one running bus and drive it home. Um, but yeah, he's got a pair of them. They both run and drive. Apparently they both need electrical work. Um, obviously this woman needs lights. Um, it looks like a reasonably straight bus in the pictures. So, uh, hard to say you gotta, you gotta go look at it. Okay. Um, what would you put a price on that one? Um, current condition with all the parts that are missing, I'd probably say it's about a three, $4,000 bus, maybe a little more because we do know it runs and moves around on its own. So maybe five or 6,000. Yeah. I'd put it a five to $6,000 yeah. bus. Yeah. It's, yeah. you know, it's still a pretty nice bus. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to the next one here. Oops. So this one. Oh, we're back um, on sale. There we go. Yeah. May or may not be for sale. Yeah. Um, talk about I had a, one. I had a wanted ad up for a while because I've been looking for a bus and somebody sent me an email back saying, Hey, I'm thinking about selling this bus. This is the only picture I ever received. I don't know the serial number. I don't know much about it. Um, other than the fact I know who owns it. Yeah. The guy that owns it has three of these and he has a business where he provides buses to movie studios. So he rents out the buses for sets. Um, I think this was a spare bus that he, he doesn't use because obviously it doesn't look quite up to movie studio quality. Um, so he'd considered selling it to me and uh, I got a little bit of information about it. And then I guess he decided not to sell it and he stopped talking to me. So, which is unfortunate <laughs> because other than the, the dent in the roof up at the top, yeah. it looks like a pretty straight original bus. I mean, if you look carefully through the, uh, the pictures, you can see it's still got the modesty panel and the heater ducts, which is great. It's got the wrong mirrors on it, unfortunately. Are those? Yeah. 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 Well, and for me, this would be a deal killer. You're not going to get that dent pulled out. Um, not it, easily. No. It would be a lot of work because most of the buses have that whole front sections there. You'd have to tear, you'd have to tear into the area where the modesty panel is. It's a, I mean, it, it's, it, it would be complicated. Yeah. You'd have to create an access hole to get one of those, uh, dent guys to get behind it, to work the dent. Yeah. But that's but thick aluminum. I trust me. That's that a dent guy's not gonna be able to do much. He might with a puller and drill holes, and then you gotta patch the holes. And um, so this is right here. There's usually a little greyhound dog, and you guys are making these now, aren't you? We are. Um, we're held up because of COVID nineteen, but we're having both the dog and the bezel reproduced. Uh, a lot of people are missing the bezel because when the dogs were taken off, the bezels were taken off as well. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, that those will be available in the coming future. Uh, we'll see how long this pandemic takes to Go. settle down. So PD3751.com. So what you kind of see here with a dot com behind it, um, that's where uh, your site is. Yes, that's correct. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, oops. Hang on a second here. Oh, come on. Let's go to the next one here. There we are. Boom. Come on. All right. This one's in Northeast uh, Pennsylvania. Um, I don't know much about this bus other than uh, for me, I'd probably pass on it because it's been completely painted. The whole cool thing about silver sides is that they're silver. Yeah, that's beige. a deal breaker for me. Is If, if they're <laughs> painted, that's an absolute 100% deal breaker for me. I'd have to strip all that off and that would just be painstaking to get yeah. all that paint off and all the grooves and all those metal strips. Oh, uh. I mean, look at the vents in the back. Could you imagine taking all that paint off? You'd almost have to take the door off and dip it. Yeah. Yeah. That might actually be a better way to go. So do you know anything about this one? Um, yeah, this bus had actually been sold. Somebody put a deposit on it and then they found a nicer bus and backed out and walked away from it. Um, it apparently runs and drives but has a bit of a clutch clutch issue i think it had a clutch put in it but it wasn't adjusted correctly something like that um the interior needs a gut job very vintage retro inside um but apparently does run and is somewhat drivable i, I think the clutch drags is the problem yeah and that's an that can be fixed uh yeah. so the dog dish is still there um it's not the original not the original uh, appearance, but it it's the parts are all there. You could no, have but but you can uh, you can work with that because it's got all the mounting pieces, so you, you can reproduce the pieces of glass and the stops the stop lens itself. We're having reproduced as well. Those are actually completed and hopefully should be on route. Okay. 
All right, let's see our next one here. Ah, this one I actually talked, I almost bought, I didn't buy it. I, I talked and I decided to walk on this one. This is down in West Palm Beach, Florida. I believe it's been sold now. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, it has been sold and uh, I believe it went for $10,000. The asking price was significantly more and slowly came down. So a um, couple of things now, it, they found a buyer because it's running and it's functional. Um, it did need to tune up, but the guy who was selling it was actually the mechanic and the owner of the bus uh, was an older gentleman who didn't really internet very well. Um, but uh, yeah, this one's kind of a cool bus uh, uh, in in the sense that it runs. The interior is actually pretty nice. I mean, you can you wouldn't have to gut it. You you just have to do a couple upgrades, maybe some new carpet, and you can work like with that. it. Yeah, but. All Boy, the did they kill all the cool all stuff. All the lights. All the <laughs> lights are wrong on this bus. I yeah. don't think there's one original light left on it. Square taillights in the back. I'm sorry. Um, the These aren't the Michigan lights <laughs> up here. I'm sorry. These aren't the original corner lights. It's like they pulled everything off and put... And then this mirror. Come on, man. What are we? 1993? Well, they've uh, they're probably the power mirrors, though. I mean, they probably well, are self-adjusting and stuff. They've painted all the belts at the front too, and the bottom of the bay doors. I'd have to strip all that. Even the even the aluminum window frames are all painted. Well, if you see here, they just put a little bit more aluminum, almost like corrugated metal or something, over the window. But the way um, they did that, I'd almost put money on the fact the windows are underneath there. Because, yeah, they probably are. Yeah, because if you were going to cover them over properly, you'd take them out. So I would give an A plus to this one uh, for functionality. Not an A plus, but I give it an A for functionality. And, uh, but, uh, but as far as, you know, looking for a vintage bus, I, it, to me, it, I wouldn't, I'd pass on it. I did pass on it. I, I looked at some pictures, a few more than this. I'm like, uh, that's not what I want. Yeah. I was the same way. I went back and forth with the gentleman who was selling it and I just couldn't live with the exterior the way it is. And I decided I'd keep looking for something more original because I'd, I'd have to replace all those lights. I'd have to find mirrors. I'd be pulling that, that siding off, stripping mm -hmm. all that extra paint. All right, let's see what's the next one here. Oh, one down, come on. Come on, quit being fussy. Wants to jump back on you. There. Okay, this is one that's not listed publicly for sale. It's one that was sent to me because uh, someone knew I was looking for a bus. This was actually a pretty cool bus. This was listed in Bus Conversions Magazine, I believe back in about 95. Um, it doesn't have all the original windows. It's hard to see in that picture, but uh, you can see that the windows have been redone. Now, the windows it does have, somebody actually went to Peninsula, went, actually the current owner had it done when he built the bus, went to Peninsula Window and had custom sliders made that are apparently really nice. Um, not original, but uh, they haven't modified the window opening, so you could put original windows back in it. And uh, yeah, neat bus. It's got a two-valve head with Jake's. Um, a lot of really neat things about this bus. Reasonably clean, but very retro, very 90s on the interior. It's got that sort of mauve, gray, purple thing happening that was possible. Po yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you can picture a bus that was built in the 80s, early 90s, when people were trying to make them look more modern than they actually were, that's what it is. So, it, I mean, it, it's well done. It's just not done in the taste that I like. And there'd be too much redoing for the asking price it was i mean you're you're i think the asking price was 30 40 grand i can't remember exactly but it, it was yeah. it was up there it was up there. well i think my uh i think my my joke on not this bus but another one i said if you're asking forty thousand dollars and you've got mauve in your interior decor <laughs> you're over asking <laughs> uh, you're probably right about that but it looks like the dash is nice and shiny and been polished so so the thing I don't like about this is the windows. Look at that. Yeah, I'd have to replace all those and put those back to original. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, that was the... that was kind of the deal killer for me. I, I I kind of stopped looking at it at that point. So it's a lot like that last bus we looked at, where from a function standpoint, it's really functional, but from a what makes these buses cool factor, you know, it's lost a lot because uh, so much of it's been converted to. Yeah, you it's know. got the wrong mirrors on it too. Yeah, um, I mean, it looks it it looked it's a cool. It's almost like a concept bus. Like if if they evolved this this original rounded design into like a more modern bus, this is probably what it would look like. But I I, I don't know. It just doesn't do it for me. Yeah, it's a nice looking bus. It's got a lot of cool stuff on it. It's got um, 
it's got upgraded injectors too. Uh, I can't remember all. Um, I I made a lot of notes on this bus. I had considered it for a little bit because the owner believes he still has all the original windows from when he he did the conversion, and as well, he's got a an early pre-war parts bus, like a, a short one, thirty a thirty-three foot. Yeah, thirty-seven oh one, not a thirty, yeah. uh, not a forty-one one. Yep, and I, I've actually uh, am talking with another thirty-seven oh one pre-war owner about uh, maybe taking that bus off their hands for some parts, but that's another conversation. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> the gym bus, uh, <laughs> La Crosse, Wisconsin. This is the very first bus that I looked at. And uh, I think everybody who's looking at silver sides has seen this bus for sale. Yeah. He, so um, I, I mean, nice guy. He's uh, he's an older guy. Um, this is a 1948. We never could find the VIN number on underneath the bus where, where it's stamped on the frame and we couldn't find the VIN plate. Um, heavily modified uh, bus on the inside. Um, the interior uh, smells like must. Um, this up here is leaking and so it leaked all over the roof um, these air conditioning units you can see they don't even match and they don't work he's got like these spaceship things i have no idea what those things do but he's got two of them um so for tracking it, ufos yeah well maybe so you know hand painted dog on the side um, gone with the brown on tan color palette hey that was I, that was styling back in the 70s let me tell you so this was a 1948 bus it is probably still for sale. Um, he was asking when I looked at it and this is where it kind of killed because when we, when I first looked at it, it was listed for 15,000. Then it jumped to 18,000. Then it jumped to 21,000. The guy was all over the place with price. I think it's and, on uh, one of those bus for sale sites for 32,000 still. Okay. So, so the guy was, is, you know, he's, I don't know. He, I don't know what he was thinking on, on how his prices and things like that, but it it the steering is really bad. The wiring is a is a basket case, um, and uh, the interior is is so so. You can see some of the windows are just shot. You know it does run. I drove around. I got to drive it. Um, the steering is like, I think it's about a half turn before the the wheels start responding. So there's something going on with the steering. Um, it's a bus that's been used a lot. Let's put it that way. Um, you know probably been used as an RV. Um, you know, it was relatively straight. One of the deal, deer killers, they just patched up the original latches for the cargo areas and put those like, what do you call them? Barn latches or shed, shed latches, shed latch. Yeah. So you've got shed latches all over it. And so that's like one thing I'm like, oh, that's not good. Um, you know, and the, the back is held on with a bungee cord, which all my buses are right now, but it, they can, you can be fixed. Um, you but know, it runs all, and drives. That's a bonus. It, it runs it, and it, drives. So it tires though. It it does need tires. I mean, I looked at the tires. They're all probably eight to ten years old, which you really don't want to have tires older than about five years. Um, it it does have a working RV, which you got to give consideration that you know, like my both of my buses, I got. I don't have to start from scratch with holding tanks and and all of those things. You know, generators and stuff. Um, and so it it all that seems to be pretty functional or you know tune up kind of stuff just to get it running again did this um, one have the dog on the back i don't remember what the back looked like no no it doesn't it just has a uh i don't think it has anything the dog dish is there but it's not the original okay. um i think it's just like a piece of plexiglass with a design on it so i would say this is probably realistically an eight eight to ten thousand dollar bus because it does run um but it you know, it's going to need some love. I'm sure the bearings and all that stuff haven't been looked at in a long time. Oh, this um, is the one I remember now. This has got a four valve head on it with, it N70, does. with N70 injectors. Yep. Yeah. That, I mean, that adds a little bit of value to it because you're a thousand bucks for a head and then you got to put it on. So that brings a little bit of value to the bus. Um, the fact it's operating and it will drive down the road, I think, gives it some value. Um just a lot of downsides and I, I think it's grossly overpriced. If he lowered his price to like 15,000 asking, I think mm -hmm. probably would have, probably would have sold by now. Well, I, w I mean, if he hadn't played games with me, I probably would have been suckered into, you know, buying it, but he, you know, he just kept jumping the price around and I don't know. He, I mean, it just, it's, it's sadly, it's going to be one of these things where if he's really serious about getting rid of it, he, he'll, he'd have been sold by now because he did yeah. get it marketed well, but, 
I don't know to me and I've bought a lot of Volkswagens you've you know you've bought vintage cars in the past you know the guys who play games you just you know what thanks but no thanks even yeah. if it's something valuable you just kind of you either got to wait them out or you until they get serious or you just move on which is what I did yeah it's still got the dog on the front by the mm -hmm. look of it I wonder, I wonder if that's an original one or if that's something reproduced it doesn't look reproduced it's you know it's, so it's it, original it's missing the destination sign which kind of sucks um it's it's back there i think you could probably take that off and oh it's just it got a here. cover put over it yeah you need a piece of glass and you need a okay. you know some some rubber but it doesn't yeah. have the right turn signals it does have the fogs which is kind of nice um it's got some good stuff about it but yeah it's just overpriced i mean ten thousand dollars i would i would have bought it and drove it home The old dog. I think you've muted yourself there. I did. Sorry, I, I, I had a sneeze. A non-COVID <laughs> sneeze during he or uh, uh, allergy season. All right, so this one is, uh, this is a member of uh, the Bus Grease Monkey Forum who, who purchased this bus. Uh, and you looked at, at maybe buying this bus as well. I saw um, it posted. Um, I just looked at it online. I never really got serious about it because there's too many modifications on it. And it was hit in the rear corner, and that's why yeah. it was resold. So you can see the damage there. And it's actually broken uh, the bell housing and one of the engine mounts, I believe. Ooh, okay. Yeah, so it's got some funky stuff going on in the back end. I mean, fixable, but some funky stuff. Um, the The big things I don't like about this bus are... It's hard to see in these pictures, but down the side, they've removed all the windows. They've put in these RV shutter style things, um, and they've actually the, added... Jalousies, we call those. Da oh, okay. Jalousies, okay. Jalousies. And there's a door halfway down the bus. Really? So cut, oh, cut here it, it is. Yeah, yeah you can see it. cut right into there. the frame of the bus to Oops. build the door. Yeah. Wow. I can tell you... Um... There is one cool thing about this bus is it was Sleepy Labeef's tour bus. That's kind of neat. I've been a fan of Sleepy Labeef for probably, I don't know, 10, 12 years. Um, Sleepy was this like alternative country when a turn of a country didn't exist. He was this kind of whacked out country singer guy. Um, go Google Sleepy Labeef. And I mean, he just, he was like a, he was like a character out of Hee Haw or something, but um so that's like cool to me is like, oh, wow, there's Sleepy Labeefs. I mean, we know of a Cena Cruiser that was Arlo Guthrie's bus. That would be one I'd love to buy. You know, I'm not going to, but it would be cool to own. That's floating out there. And, you know, there's a lot of celebrities that used buses like this, but this was Sleepy's bus. So this one, would you think a parts bus or do you think this could be restored? It could be restored, but you've got to deal with all those windows in that door. Unless you like that, and if you don't mind that style and you could live with it, then yeah, you could restore it and uh, do an RV conversion. And actually, it might be kind of nice to have a, a door at the side there, depending yeah. on your, your your layout. But to me, to me, that would be a parts bus. That wouldn't be one that I would restore. So twenty five hundred to three grand. Yeah, that's about a twenty five hundred dollar bus. Okay. This one in Towanda, Pennsylvania. Yeah, this was actually this? the, well, this was the first silver side that I went to look at that was for sale. Um, this actually belongs to a Bus Grease Monkey Forum member. Um, he responded to one of my wanted ads that I was looking for a bus. So again, it wasn't posted publicly. He did have it up on Craigslist for a short while. Um, it's got a lot of really neat things about this bus, but it's got some things that I didn't like. Like if you see, it's it's hasn't got the right mirrors on it. Um, very, very straight, clean bus uh, as, as far as body-wise. Like the siding is really nice condition. Um, the paint on the front of it's really nice. Um, one of the things I didn't like is you can't tell in these pictures, but the siding is actually painted silver. It's not actually uh. the bare, bare aluminum. So that was that was one of the big things that was a deal breaker for me. It, so the paint been, looks great though from that, from yeah. that front shot. This, yeah. I mean, this looks great. I don't know why they have an American Eagle plate on there, but that's, you know, that's a little weird. But I see uh, that on a lot of buses. Uh, I, I don't know why, but I, I think it's a styling thing. People, people like that. But it's actually, it, this would be a good bus if you wanted to strip that or if you could live with the fact that the sides are painted. Yeah. Um, 
but it, it's a it's a good running bus. Uh, it's running driving. Um, I'm sure. I, I mean, Dave's taking it down off Craigslist, but I'm sure he'd he'd sell it if you if you were to contact him. Um, he bought it. He bought it as a second bus when he was having an engine swap done on his one that he drives. So he he drove it for a little bit and uh, he keeps it running. He changes the oil every couple of years and he he starts it up every year and um, make sure it's still going. It's got the Greyhound on the back, which is kind of nice. Mm -hmm. um, so a couple of things. Uh, one is he put a camper handle on the door. And so this is one of those things that grinds me. I've got one with like a shed latch on one of my buses. Actually, both of my buses, they just threw shed latches on. This is a better, nicer way to go. Scott, uh, Bus Grease Monkey, he's just got a key with a remote. He went and bought one of those uh, keyless entry. So all he can do with his little key fob on his keychain or whatever is, is hit the unlock button and it unlocks. These buses never had a door handle here originally. What they do have is this little button right up here in the nose that if you push that button, it'll pop the door open and then you can manually pull it open. And mm -hmm. that's cool. My my uh, silver my uh, pre war does that. The other one's sticking. As a matter of fact, I think I locked it shut by accident <laughs> when we were leaving. <laughs> I slammed the door shut, and then I forgot something Oops. in the bus, and I tried to go open it, and I couldn't. And so I'm like, ah. Uh. So yeah, this it, one has the step, and the step works flawlessly. Uh, uh, it, it 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 is so smooth. There's no resistance on the door. Um, so that's a huge bonus for this one. But, but as far as I was going to say, as far as latches go, going with this camper style, I really like. Um, so that's kudos that, that they, they did a good professional style, uh, you know, lock and didn't just try to, you know, screw on one of those hinge lock things. Um, not original mirrors, but they're nicely done. Um, so yeah, this is, this is a great camper, in my opinion, one of the nicer camper ones I've seen. <clears throat> this is a nice one, um, yeah. kind of considered in the Midwest because you're you're still thinking about this one. I'm still thinking about this one. Um, it's got some good things. It's got some bad things. Uh, it's 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 got the modesty panel. The heater ducts are there. Um, it's got the destination sign, although I don't see it in those pictures. It does have it. It's got the mm -hmm. Greyhound dash still. Uh, I can't remember if it's got the dog on the back or not. I, I think it does. Um, the downsides would be he's filled in some of the fluting there. Oh, I'd yeah, I'd yeah have I to, see it right here. Yeah, it doesn't look horrible. Like it, it looks like they've tried to modernize it and update it. I see a lot of silver sides that have two or three rows of fluting painted to try and get a more modern look. But I, I, I want that original look. So I'd have to find another bus to uh, replace all that fluting that's been stripped out. I, there, there's a chance it might be underneath and they've just covered over top of it but you won't know until you take one of the pieces off. It's missing the original turn signals, which I know where to get those made, apparently. Um, you can see that mirror has been welded back together. Um, yeah. It's got, yeah. It's got some damage on the door. The door, uh, the bar that opens and closes the door is broken, so it's swung around and whacked into the bumper. Uh -huh. um, it's, an, it's empty inside, so it was an RV at one point, but it's been gutted since because it needed an update. The, the current owner bought it, I think, for four years ago. I think he said he bought it in 2016 and was going to redo it and just kind of lost interest in it. So. All right. Where would you put this one? Um, if it runs and drives 8,000. Okay. That seems fair. Yeah. Yeah. Hammond, Minnesota. Wow. <laughs> uh, so, you know, all kinds of interesting stuff. things going on with this one. Yeah. Yeah. Complete, uh, complete original isn't exactly the first thing that comes to mind on this. Interesting comes to mind. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So where, do you know the story in this one? Is this not the one that was a fully blueprinted, professionally built coach? Custom coach. That's right. This was originally a custom coach that's seen better days. A custom coach always had those round windows that was like their Portal trademark window. yeah that was a very 70s thing wasn't it and so look at this steering wheel that's not an original steering wheel i don't think i think it's an aftermarket steering wheel uh i don't know i i probably would pass on this one because it's just been messed with too much but what would you think it's fixable for the right price um i mean you could pop those windows back out where they filled them in and redo it for the right price i would do it 
but you're right. It, it it's missing a lot of its original features, like the, the the destination signs gone, the turn signals have been monkeyed with, the windows have been monkeyed with. It looks like the interior needs a full restoration. Um, I would buy it for the right price, but I wouldn't I wouldn't be keen on buying it. Yeah, where would you put the price? It's obviously running because they put the rock. Yeah, there. yeah, running, driving. Maybe five or six thousand. I would say six is a solid six or seven thousand. I mean, this would be one that I would buy and put together with that last one we just saw. The that's ride. actually a good point. You bought the pair of those, you could build yourself a nice bus and yeah. then still have a parts bus. Although, you know what? Somebody might actually like that style of that uh, conversion. Yeah, yeah, they might. I mean, if you were into that, if you like that style of conversion, then it might be a good bus for you. Yeah. It's been up on Craigslist a couple times. The guy's not pressed to sell it, and he he took it down because he wasn't getting the interest that he wanted. Yeah. All right. Mississippi. Mississippi. This was the last one I went to look at. I actually did a video um, on YouTube about this bus. I did a walk around and a walk through and um, gave my opinion on this bus. Um, if this bus was close to home, I would have bought it and hauled it home. It is probably got the straightest siding and the straightest emergency exit door out of all the buses I've looked at that are for sale. The fluting lines up absolutely perfectly on that rear door. Maybe this is something we should talk about. A lot of people don't know about this, uh, the sagging in the rear of these buses. Yeah, so basically the rear of these buses start to sag over time because you take that Detroit diesel and all of its accessories bolted up. You're talking about 3,500 pounds? And these are a monocoque aluminum design, and all that's hanging off the rear firewall structure and the roof. Um, so th there was a design flaw with these buses where the back would start to sag. And the emergency exit door, uh, when you look at it, if it doesn't line up right, you can see that that bus is sagging. Um, Greyhound had a fix for these. There was various different fixes that they did to fix the sagging, and they actually put reinforcements into the bus in various places. <clears throat> so Scott, uh, the Bus Grease Monkeys bus has this silver band above the wheel well. That was a uh, that was one of the the fixes. Is that they would actually go in and weld and 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 attach it to here to fix it. Um, Neither of my buses have any of that damage, the, the crack in the frame or anything like that. So I don't know what I did to luck out, but. Uh, um, this one has the reinforcing piece uh, they put in the roof above the door. Yep. Uh, this this one's had that done. It's too bad we don't have a picture of the other side up, um, but it's absolutely straight. Like they did it as preventative. So mm -hmm. this one never sagged. It's a very, 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 very straight bodied bus. So if you wanted to strip down oh. and do a full restoration, this would be a good bus. It's got yeah. no holes in the roof. Yeah, this one, uh, it's been sitting in Mississippi, sitting in a humid climate. Everything is seized on this bus, even Ooh. the throttle pedal, even the brake pedal, even the clutch pedal. Everything is just seized. So you'd have to go through and free everything up. Um, you'd have to free up the brakes to even tow it out of there because the handbrake was stuck in the on position. Um, it... it it would be a project. It's well, that's uh, a, that's two days right there to get things freed up. Yeah, I was watching. Uh, was it TJ uh, who has a Cena Cruiser in Illinois? Yeah. yeah, watching him try to get his, uh, I think it was his shift rod going. And man, that that's complicated. It's complicated, and it's cruiser. just. To me, there's other problems that are easier to deal with. Yeah, you're dealing with elevation change and a whole series of linkages on those scenic cruisers. I, I don't envy anybody having to fix one of those shifters. There's a lot to it. Um, yeah. But yeah, this bus, the, the motor's only got about 5,000 miles on it. It was rebuilt professionally, and then the owner just stopped using it. So it hasn't been on the road legally in about 20 years. Yeah, you're like pointing at the destination sign. The frame, frame it was there, but it had like a cover... Yep. Um, you just get a piece it. of glass cut. They're very simple. I took my, uh, put, took mine apart. It's easy to fix. Yeah. So apparently this bus was last driven five years ago, but I think it was just kind of running enough. They could drive it and move it to the location it is because every switch in the dash is seized. Uh, nothing, nothing works electrically. Yeah. Um, 
other than the fact it's got a rebuilt motor and it's it's a good straight bus, it's a full restoration. Like I'd be pulling the motor out of this to strip the body down, doing it properly, putting it back together. If you wanted a full restoration, this is a great bus. If you want something that's running, rolling down the road that you can work with, this is not the right bus. All right. Let's see what our next one is here. Uh, this is another Mississippi bus. Yeah, I don't know a lot about this one. It was up on Facebook. Um, all I know is it's got no driveline whatsoever. He doesn't even have any parts to put a driveline back in it. And he's asking $4,000. This is a parts bus, probably two, two grand tops. Yeah, yeah. Just because there's, it, no, there's no magic in the the things. I mean, there's the Michigan Lights, fine. Um, you can get, you know, for this series of Michigan Lights, for example, I've seen them on eBay for a couple hundred bucks. Um, but yeah, I mean, the turn signals aren't the original and um you know like a mirror maybe you could get 50 bucks for that so this one's a parts bus for sure so this one is the uh uh um <clears throat> companion i guess to the sleepy le beef bus we looked at earlier yeah the same owner bought this one as well okay so it's so this is I, now a 4151 which is the 41 seat version of the buses um I don't know much too, too much about it. You know a little bit about this one. I know a little bit about it. I had considered it, but um, um, the gentleman who went to look at for me ended up purchasing it for himself, which I can't fault him. I probably would have done the same. Um, it's a reasonably straight bus. It uh, He's got it running already, but it's leaking some coolant out of the injector tubes, I believe. So mm. he's going to have to pull the head and, and have yep. that fixed. But other than that, it's, it's, it's reasonably straight bust with not a lot of holes in it. Um, I don't think there's any holes in the roof. And I believe the siding's pretty straight on it. Um, it does have a side marker or a patched side marker hole. Yeah, you can see that. It's... Um, it's missing the fog. Somebody's put different plates in there, and it looks like they're missing the chrome bezels as well for the fogs. But it's a it's a it's a good bus for it's it's got good bones to it. It would be a good one to do a restoration on. Um, the fact that it runs is is a bonus as well. What what do you think you'd put a price on? I'd say this is a solid five thousand dollar bus. I think so. I think it's a four or five thousand dollar bus. Yeah. Yeah. This one's down in Jacksonville, Florida. This is forty one fifty one zero seven eight. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I flew down to Jacksonville to look at this one and uh, I've got a walk. I actually like this one. This one looks pretty nice. Oh, uh, I thought this was going to be the bus. I had high hopes for this one. I, it was giving me good vibes. Um, I was really thinking this was the, this was going to be a good bus for me. Um, 4151 fairly late production. Uh, it was apparently running and driving a uh, couple of years ago. Uh, it's got, the stop sign pieces on the back end. It's got a lot of nice original stuff. It looks fairly straight in all the pictures, um, but it's got some big issues, um, which the owner didn't disclose to me until I got there. It hadn't been run in over a year, and I had warned him not to try to start it till I got there and so I could check the rack to make sure nothing was seized, and he wanted to get it running and moving before I got there, so he started it, and it ran away on him. It, it ran away on him the night before I flew in to look at it, and he didn't tell me about it till I got there. Um, it didn't sound like he knew how to shut it off and got it shut off right away either. So I don't know if there's any engine damage done or not. When I got there, the valve cover was pulled, and his mechanic friend had already pulled the one injector and buggered off with it. So I couldn't even free up the injector and put it back in to see if it would run. So I have no idea what condition the engine is in. So that's one of the big problems with it. Uh, I was actually hoping to be able to drive this one back, throw throw a temporary plate on it, and just drive it home. Um, the other big issues are is the interior. If you can picture the smell, no, not picture, but imagine the smell of a bus that's not been driven for five to ten years sitting in Florida swampland. Yeah. Just, yeah. just, just imagine it's not been opened up, it's not been aired out, and the roof vents have been leaking. Ugh. Yeah. So the floor was the floor. It had hardwood floor, which I oh cool. It's got a nice hardwood floor. Floor was all spongy when you walked on it. And yeah. I took one step up into the bus, and I had to turn around and get off it. It was that bad. I had to go open up the the rear door and just air it out for a bit. 
so the looks like the modesty panel is there or not there it's there but it's been covered up so i don't okay. know what condition it's in underneath so that's yeah. that's a bonus it looks like it's got the uh you can see they've covered it up uh the, the heater duct at the top they've covered it with some paneling uh the destination sign is there they've put a different uh sign in it i think it says cheat and heart special or something on it i can't remember exactly um it's got some really weird stuff going on with the back bumper. They've extended the back bumper and pushed it out about six inches and put tin work around it, really kind of cheesy. Um, and the reason why they've done that is they've put a different exhaust on it and tucked the exhaust up under the rear bumper. Not oh. really sure why they did that. Um, it could be something to do with they, they put an additional radiator in there and I think they were putting power, they, yeah, they were putting power steering in and they were putting a cooler for power steering. Um, somebody was really getting creative with some of the stuff they were doing on that bus, so. Yeah. Yeah. So where would you put a price on this one? Whew. Uh, oh, I didn't mention the other big fault. They put this massive oversized generator into one of the bays and cut out the entire floor and part of the sidewall of one of the bays. Wow. Um, so that was a huge downside too. I didn't really like that. And, and it, it's structural. They've taken out some of the structural of the bus doing that. And the generator hangs down about six, eight inches under the bus. It's just so massive. So um I would put this bus probably at about a six thousand dollar bus. Okay, six thousand. Yeah, and that's be and you know what? Maybe a little more because you can that generator. It's got this massive generator. If you could find a buyer, you'd probably get five or six grand for that generator. If you, I, I think it's like a twenty kilowatt or something. It's just this. Nobody <laughs> needs a twenty kilowatt generator in their bus. It's this big four <laughs> cylinder. It's just massive. So if if you could if you could resell that generator, if you bought the bus say for five grand and say you got three or four grand for the generator you'd have yourself a good bus to start with but there's a lot of stuff you'd have to undo yeah <laughs> uh okay okay yeah. uh elzenberg washington this uh, one they... popped up on craigslist this week it's got oh, some yeah. interesting things <laughs> it's uh i don't know a lot about it i haven't talked with the owner i just capped these are the pictures from the ad that was on craigslist um Apparently it's been for sale before. Uh, he's asking, was it eleven grand? I think eleven five or something for it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Looks like it's got newer rims on it. Maybe some newer tires. Well, to me, it's too cut up. Yeah, I, I agree. Mean, got, I mean, look at all this. What's going on here? I mean, putting cutting vents into your silver sides. I mean, that's you take what's cool about it and you slice it all up. Um, you know, nice rivet job on the windows. I mean, being kind of brutal here, but. Well, it's missing the fluting off the base, the luggage base too. Oh yeah, well, that's gone. Yeah, yeah, this one, I would pass on it. Um, do you know what they were asking for this thing? I think it was 11.5. No way. This yeah, is, I, this is a, again, a five or $6,000 bus, kind of like what, the last one. You know what this bus would be good for? Drive <laughs> line. Use this one as, because this one runs and drives apparently. If yeah. you could buy this one for the right price drive it to where that other bus is that's missing the drive line and drop it in. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a shame. It's a, it's a cool bus, but they're all cool. But, uh, you know, he's got a bunch of holes cut in the roof and. Yeah. So you, you can start to see my frustration with trying to find a bus that's mostly original. It's, it's very hard to do. And finally, I think we're going to leave you with, uh, with probably the best bus of them all. <laughs> the Noriega bus. <laughs> so this there is a story out there if you type in noriega bus on the internets uh you will find this bus this is halfway up the mountain down in central america and uh there's there's more pictures than this but um i don't know this to me this is a solid fourteen thousand dollar bus if you ask me absolutely you, no, every door, no door they've <laughs> they've actually custom made this door that's some quality woodwork for there. sure. Now, front windows are gone. You can get those replaced, but look at what they've put in 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 its in its place. There's a single Michigan light left over. They've taken the belt lines off, um, which I almost considered flying down to grab it for my pre-war, but uh, it's gone. So yeah, so this is uh, this is probably the worst one I think I've ever seen, um, <laughs> and it's it's a basically it's a sheep shed. It's, it, it's, uh, it's not on blocks. It's still got tires. No, it's still got tires. What's amazing to me is this is halfway up a mountain. How in, in God's name did they get this thing up there? 
Um, the, the fact it got here is impressive. But uh, yeah, if you go out there and type in Noriega and you type in either Silver Sides or GMC or Greyhound Bus, you'll find the story of this thing. It was on some, uh, you know, it was on some something out there on the internet. But uh, so that's uh, that one, you know, that's a keeper right there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, it uh, it's been fun chatting. We've we've kind of come to the end of the buses that we found. I think uh, you know as we get more along, um, it'd be fun to kind of to keep doing this. But uh, I think we had how many buses? Do you think we went through somewhere in the ballpark of thirty plus buses that have been for sale over the last couple of years? Yeah, it's quite surprising how many. If you consider how old these buses are and how yeah. few were actually made, it's surprising that there's actually been this many for sale. So there is, there are a couple of other ones out there, I'm sure. Um, you know, I think that, uh, um, you know, that, that there's a lot that may be for sale and like the local shopper, a lot of these, these guys who own them right now, they're really not into the internet. I, um, you know, I, I mean, some of these photos, they had a friend or something list the bus for them because they just didn't, um, they just didn't have the means to it. So it's by, by no means is this the only ones that are out there, all these buses that we saw. Um, but they are certainly the uh, the ones that we stumbled across over the last year, year and a half or so. And so, uh, so far I'm lucky I got two and you've got none. So you got to catch up. <laughs> you're, you're two up on me. You're not one up. You're two up on me. Yep. But, uh, but hopefully as soon as all of this uh, stuff, quarantine and stuff uh, kind of relinquishes or whatever to stay in place, um, you'll be able to uh, to go out there. It sounds like you you got a lead on a couple that you you really want to finally. Yeah, I've got a lead on one. I think I really want to buy. It's a little more money than I want to spend, but quite honestly, I'm getting tired of flying all over the country looking at buses. And uh, it, it's a great. You know which one I'm talking about. It's a great yep. bus mechanically. It's a great bus uh, exterior wise. It's got an RV interior that's it, it vintage but usable, and it wouldn't take a lot to rework it to modernize it. And uh, it's just. I got to bite the bullet and, and buy one. It's more money than I want to spend, but you know what? It's going to save me thousands of hours of work. Yeah. <laughs> Jason, thank you very much <laughs> for spending time today. Um, like I said, let's, uh, let's keep doing this and uh, we will, uh, we'll definitely continue. So, um, and then we'll, uh, we'll do another video like this. Yeah. Thanks for having me. It's been uh, interesting and entertaining. All right. Have a great day. You too.